it's comparative study between alpha-calcitol and pericalcitol in order to uh, describe the ability to suppress PTA without uh, increasing uh, calcium and phosphorus levels. Um, during the, this study we collected a biobank where we made blood samples before and after each treatment period. This study was a crossover study where we started with six weeks washout period, 16 weeks treatment, six weeks washout period, and 16 weeks with the upper side of treatment. So patients were randomized into two treatments up with different uh, treat, treatment periods. And so the biobank consisted of four blood samples before and after each treatment period. And so the patient in the primary study, which had collected a biobank for four times, entered the study of FDF23. Um, the FDF23 levels were measured by uh, in the biobank, and then we described the changes in FDF23 during treatment with alpha-calcitol and pericalcitol. And we found that uh, alpha-calcitol and pericalcitol increases FDF23 to the same degree during treatment periods. And that the increase in FDF23 disappeared during washout, and then it were increased again in the second treatment period. So the effect of, on FDF23 is equal between alpha-calcitol and pericalcitol. That's the main finding. Um, and as FDF23 is emerging as an important regulator of the mineral metabolism, uh, also in patients with chronic kidney disease, it's interesting to know how vitamin D treatment influences on FDF23. Um, and FDF23 is elevated uh, much more in patients with chronic kidney disease than in the general population. And it's interesting to find out why is FDF23 elevated. Um, and vitamin D may play a part in this elevation of FDF23 in dialysis patients.